So now that you've been exposed to the structure and functionality of Java Condition Object, let's talk about some of its key methods. As you can see, there's a bunch of methods. We're going to focus on a handful of them, and I'll give you a quick overview of some other ones. The key methods in Java Condition Objects allow threads to wait and notify each other. And the names for these methods are carefully chosen to avoid conflicts with other existing methods inherited from Java Object. And the methods we're going to talk about here are wait, signal, and signal all. And as I mentioned, these Names are similar to the ones you get out of the box on Java Object, which would be wait, notify, and notify all. They're similar, but they have to be different. And that's because the methods in Java Object, wait, notify, notify all, are final methods that cannot be overridden. Now, why they did it that way, it's probably because they didn't realize at the time that they would need to have more than one condition object in in a user-defined or app-defined condition, uh, app-defined object. And so they just didn't think ahead. But they're final, so we're stuck with them. And this actually causes a bit of consternation, as we'll see. The method implementations of await, signal, and signal all are implemented using the abstract queued synchronizer framework. And you can see that here at the link down at the bottom of the slide. So let's talk through each of the methods briefly. The await method suspends the calling thread until it's signaled or interrupted. So it'll wait until something's been signaled, or it can also return if it's interrupted, in which case you get an interrupted exception. What happens when you call await is it parks the thread that called the method onto the condition object's internal queue, or that wait set I was talking about, which is that doubly linked list of nodes. Those things are used to park stuff. Now, if you haven't followed the protocol, and the lock that's associated with the condition object is not held when you call a wait, you will receive the illegal monitor state exception, saying that, sorry, Charlie, you don't get to get you don't get to go to sleep, you get to get an exception back because you didn't use the protocol correctly. So assuming that somebody is waiting in the wait set on the condition object, if another thread calls signal, it moves the longest waiting thread from the queue for this condition object to the queue for the owning lock. <laughs> so remember, Condition objects are always associated with rentrant locks. And when signal is called, it takes whatever thread is the longest waiting thread, and it moves it over to the queue for the owning lock, because, of course, these two things are associated with each other. So it just takes the guy at the front and sticks him on to the, probably the end of the owning lock. So that's what signal does. It moves one thread. Signal all will move all the threads from the condition object's wait set to the queue of waiters for the owning lock. So signal moves one, signal all moves them all. Now, this can be problematic, and this leads to something known colloquially as the thundering herd problem. And what happens is if you do signal all, you're going to wake up a heck of a lot of threads. And they become the thundering herd. Why are they the thundering herd? Because they all come crashing in to the monitor, the monitor method, the, the, the synchronized method, and all try to acquire the monitor lock, which is the rentrant lock that's associated with the condition. And only one of those threads can make progress at a time. So now you've got this huge queue of things that are all competing for this one measly little lock, and that causes all kinds of contention. So be careful with doing signal all. In fact, if you do condition objects correctly, you very rarely have to use signal all. There are cases where it gets useful, especially if you want to shut down all the threads for whatever reason. Like tell them all to wake up or signal them all, and then they'd say, oh, I'm going to shut down, and they shut down. That, that's a perfectly good use. But more generally, not a good idea to use 
signal all. And you'll see how we can get around that in a minute. Now, of course, there are other methods in Java condition object. There's a bunch of different variants of await. So we already talked about await. There's also interruptible versions like await. Sorry. Yeah. Await can be interrupted. The other versions work in different ways. So like await uninterruptibly is able to, it will not be able to be interrupted. So it'll wait forever. It'll await forever. Um, probably not the best idea to use it, but if you need it, it's there. And then there's also a bunch of timed await methods that take time units, and they can be used to wait up to a certain amount of time. And we've, we've used these examples before when we've talked about things like the futures in Java, where you can go and do a timed wait. You can say, I'm going to wait for the value for five seconds, and if it doesn't come in that time, I'm going to return. Well, you can use await methods in Java condition object in much the same way. You can say, I'm going to wait for an item from the array blocking queue, but I'm, I'm not going to wait forever. I'm just going to wait for five seconds. And if I don't get anything after five seconds, I'll go off and do something else and come back again later and try. So these methods, await with the timeout unit, await nanos, and await until, are very useful because they return to you how, whether or not await succeeded, <laughs> whether or not you got what you wanted or not. Oddly enough, and I have the, not got the faintest idea for why this is the case, Java's built-in monitor objects have a timed wait call that will not indicate whether or not the time had elapsed or you actually got the resource you were wanting. Very, very weird. Just completely, completely broken. So take a look at this link as to kind of why that's the case and, and sort of how to work around it. The best way to work around it is don't use built-in Java monitor objects in this way. Use the condition objects we're talking about here. So that's the end of the overview of key methods in the Java condition object class.